Hello again, this is Tuba Dillon, and I'm going to be doing a review of the Eastman 632 Double C Contrabass Tuba. I have a little information here from the Dillon Music website. A man by the name of Matt Walters helped design this tuba with the company called Eastman, which is a company right outside of Beijing, China, operated by a gentleman named Quian Ni, or Quian Nai, I'm not exactly sure, I believe it's Ni who started the music company over 20 years ago. This is a quote from him that I thought was interesting. Quote, Others look to China for cheap products, but I always felt that we had to focus on quality if we were going to be successful over the long term. Now, this man is really into making quality instruments, and he can do it much less expensively in China, which is where just about everything is made nowadays. For many, many years, tubas that were any good whatsoever pretty much only came from Europe. And now things are changing. We have a few nice tubas coming from different parts of the world. But China is the talk of the town in the brass world. So here it is. Here is this Eastman Double C tuba bought directly from China. You can look it up. Go to Dylan Music. Find out how much it costs. I won't tell you here. Worth every penny. Something important I want to uh, let you know about this horn is it's not a copy. I've heard people say that it might be a copy of the Canadian Brass Getson, I think it's a G50 tuba, or the Con 5J tuba. And I've seen those horns, and yeah, maybe there's a little bit of similarity in the size of the bell and sort of the way it's built and how fat it is, maybe where the fifth valve casing is put. But this is not a copy. This is a new innovation. I have a Chinese F tuba that's definitely a copy of a PT50. Uh, Parentucci 15 F tuba that's made in Germany by BNS. Uh, a lot of people say it's better than the original, but it's a copy. It's almost an exact copy. Some people say you can pull slides out and stick them in the other horn and it works. So this is not the same. This was a a original design horn. It might be sort of based on some other horns, but definitely not a pure copy. Would I use this horn to record on a movie soundtrack or a serious situation, being it's a Chinese tuba? Who cares? If it plays great, play it. Over the years I've played instruments that are very expensive and don't sound so great. Instruments that were not so expensive and sound incredible. So what makes this horn good? Well, what do we look for in a good double C tuba? Uh, we want to have a good low register. We want to have as good a pos as possible intonation. Uh, one of the issues with a lot of these types of horns, I mean, I guess any kind of C tuba that I've played over the years, is you sacrifice intonation for a good sound. Um, although certain companies have gotten as close as they can to a horn with good intonation, Probably the best intonation uh, I have is on a Miraphone Bruckner tuba. This one's a very close second, if not a tie with the Miraphone in its intonation. Not perfect, but better than most horns I've ever played. You really can get away with playing and not moving slides around, which is quite, quite interesting. Uh, my York Brunner and even some older horns that I've had and my F-tubas, uh, they could use for a little bit of pulling. This horn, you're pretty close to not having to pull the slides at all. So what do you look for in a good C tuba? Well, a lot of people want to buy a C tuba because they're interested in becoming a professional musician. Uh, C tuba seems to be the instrument of choice for most American tuba players, but not necessarily the best. These days there are quite a few orchestral players who are switching to B flat on a lot of pieces and really taking advantage of that uh, step down and lower register and sort of a bigger, uh, fatter sound. What were my impressions when I first got the horn? The horn did not come with a case. Uh, it came very well packaged by Matt Walters, and as far as I could tell, nothing at all was damaged other than a few tiny scratches at the top of the bell where it had been laid on the bell as he was working on it. Well, at first when I got this instrument, I was a little bit concerned because the valves here had, a, had some issues. It was just in the first valve and it had some sticking issues and I couldn't really figure out what it was. I deep cleaned it all the different ways I know how to deep clean a valve. So I spent quite some time working on it, but I didn't actually lap it because I 
don't have that kind of uh, material here in my studio. The valve section and the slide sections came, and I know Matt Walters worked on it for a while or so, he says, but they did come a little bit hard to move. Uh, the first valve slide is still a little bit hard to move, but I feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So this horn really needs a break-in period. I haven't played it a whole lot, but I think if I played it another couple months and I played it consistently at least a few times a week, the slides would start moving about. Uh, and I wouldn't have any issues with the valves. Uh, I'm pretty confident now that that first valve issue is worn in and is working fine because I haven't had it stick for probably a few weeks of messing around with this instrument. It feels a lot better, so it's good and fast. I mean, actually, that's one of the things I really like about this horn. It has super fast, smooth, smooth action valves. I mean, they really feel good. They're not very high, so you don't have to push too much with your hand um, to push them all the way down. They're not too high and they are super fast. I use ultra pure valve oil on them and I just started using the thinner ultra pure faster oil and it works I think even better and gives you a, even a little bit faster touch on these valves but they are some of the best tuba valves I've ever tried believe it or not it's a Chinese tuba but once those valves got cleaned from whatever factory gunk was on them they do a great job. The fifth valve I'm not super impressed with it has your typical Chinese little bit less craftsmanship than you know European horns or whatnot. This valve cap in the back screws almost all the way on. I mean it's tight and it's on there but there's a tiny little gap there. I don't think it affects anything at all but it's just something to notice in the craftsmanship. Also it's quite clanky so you can hear it. I'll just move it back and forth right here. I mean, the valve is pretty clanky. I have a feeling my local repairman can take care of that. So I'm not too worried about it being clanky either. So I'll take it to him. He'll put in some of Bloke's super duper rubber bouncer things that are so cool that I have on my Miraphone. And that'll be that. But I just wanted to review this horn sort of the way it came, at least when an amateur repairman like myself, like very, very minor things that I did to it. It does play really well in tune. I don't necessarily know if all the stuff I played for this video was in tune. I don't play all that much anymore, so it's hard to keep up my chops and really be playing well. First impressions, this horn looks really nice. I mean, somebody told me at my local community band practice just yesterday, he said, he'd, oh, I don't want to step on that. That looks like a brand new fancy tuba. Well, certainly pretty new, but it's not really all that fancy considering the price. I mean, your European horns like this could cost at least about twice as much. And this horn's every bit built as well or better than they are. I know they make them, but I've never seen a horn with a, an entire valve section that can be pulled out and taken off which is really fantastic for any repairman. I would be terrified to do it and take, take, to, to take this thing apart, but if you look at it carefully, it has all these different screw bits that hold these linkages together from, uh, from right along the mouthpiece and all the way down throughout the horn around the valve section. Obviously made on purpose so that you can unscrew these things and pull this whole thing apart. That's really terrific for a tube because if you do get it damaged, I think it will make it so much easier for the repairman to get in there and fix it. It also probably gives you more points to fail too, although the, th the horn has felt tight and I haven't had any issues with those in about the year that I've had it. Good uses for this horn. I think it would be a good, maybe a little bit too big for a quintet horn, but I think it'd be absolutely simple to play in a quintet for such a big horn tuba having a big bell and this york-like sound it's quite easy to play technically you can really play pretty fast on it what else about this horn well first impressions i thought it was really pretty look at the uh, engraving on this horn i'm sure it's done by a 
a Chinese computer of some sort, but who knows, maybe it's done by hand, I don't know. I mean, it does look like it's a computer engraving, um, but it's beautiful, they didn't have to put that on there, but um, I guess he really wants quality for his horns, and that's a good way to sell horns, to, to say, hey, I'm gonna make this horn beautiful. Obviously, the design element that Matt Walters, he puts put some real time in there with these people over there at Eastman to make a horn that would compete with real European instruments. The American horns seem to be kind of falling away and nobody's really buying those anymore. Uh, the Japanese horns are usually very expensive and so are the European horns. So uh, something like this is a wonderful option. I mean, if I had this in high school, I just, I would have loved it. I had, I had a Miraphone 185 double C tube in high school that I really liked, but it had all kinds of issues because it was quite old. It was all I could afford. It had leaky places where I put tape on it and I had to pull slides a lot on that horn. It was okay for playing in tune. And when I pulled the slides, I had jiggers on the, on the first and the fifth slide that did play in tune. And I would probably with this horn eventually want to get this first valve slide lapped up so it was it's nice and smooth and I don't know it feels like if it was real smooth and real fast I wouldn't need a handle because you kind of put your you either put your hand over it if you're tall or I think if it was really nice and smooth I would probably come under it and just operate it with these two fingers right here I think that would work best but right now it's still pretty tight I mean I they make everything tight, this company. All these valves are stainless steel and they're built precision perfect to fit in these valve casings. I think if they, I mean, if you got the smallest piece of sand in there, it would probably not like it. I mean, it wouldn't hurt it, but there's no room for error in there. That's why the fast, thinner valve oil works well with this instrument. So, you know, with the slides too, none of them are moving that fast. I know my repairman can probably take care of some of that. So after this video, at some point when I have some time, I'll bring it in and see what you can do with it. Maybe do a quick follow-up video and see what kind of improvements can be made to it. One kind of superficial thing I like the about the tuba, but it's kind of a practical thing too, is because it has such a big bell, you can put it right on the floor and it really has very little danger of tipping over. I mean, it's pretty solid there. My York runner, which you may have seen in some comparison video with this horn, you really have to lean up against the wall. You can't just sit it right on its bell. Even the Bruckner, well the Bruckner you can sit on its bell and it's pretty secure, but I haven't ever owned a tuba that was as secure as this one because the bell takes up almost the whole thing. So you just stick it down there and my kids don't really mess with my stuff, but I think if they walked by and bumped it, it certainly wouldn't fall over. You don't have to put it up against the wall if it's in a de decently safe place. So that's another thing I like about it. What would I say about the sound? The tuba has a warm, dark sound, but you can play it pretty bright. And surprisingly, you can play qu with quite, quite a bit of volume without breaking up. I've heard people say that the horn won't break up at all. I don't agree. I've played it uh, with some real serious volume and, and sure, you know, it, it, it breaks up at some point. My six quarter York runner, I can play just, I can give it just about everything I've got and you'll never break through a note once you get that note, you know, solid in your armature and in your brain. This horn, a small bore, you can blow it pretty loud and I think you could probably hear it in the audience uh, yeah, really well. Uh, but yes, you can overblow it just like any Yamaha or any other horn like that. Not as much as a small Yamaha tuba, but I would probably compare it with my Yamaha 822F tuba as far as being able to uh, overpower it. I think you probably give it more power than that horn, but but it might be comparable. That's And that's kind of a four-quarter F tuba. People call it a big F tuba, so it makes sense. The small bore is kind of fun. You can really pop out those notes. You get good, quick articulation because of the small bore on this horn. There may be other reasons for it, but at least that's my guess. You know, you can pop out the low notes pretty well too. Not as well as the Bruckner, but very, you know, they're, they're very solid. If you want to hit them hard like that.
One thing I don't like about these York style tube is that are built this way with all the slides open down here, all the slides open up here. I mean, they're obviously for a reason. So you have a lot of different fun things you can do with the intonation. I mean, you could almost bring the whole horn down a step if you wanted. I don't know why you, anyone would ever do that or want to do that, but you do have to dump water. I haven't quite figured out how to dump all the water out of these three spit valves. So after playing for some time, you really do have to go through, or I do just because I'm a little OCD and I don't want any water in my horn. I'll go through every single slide. One, two, three, four, <clears throat> whatever it is, five, six, seven, eight, nine or so. I'll have to go through all the slides to make sure the water's out, even including maybe every 30 minutes or so an actual horn spin like this which always gets the attention of the audiences when you're rehearsing or playing uh, but that gets the water out of that second large bow what do i love about the horn the sound the, int the intonation it's a different type of sound i mean it's it's better better articulation less of a big fog sound that you get with a six quarter tuba just really good uh, articulation, but you can you still get that foggy feeling with my Bruckner horn, and I really like that horn too. I mean, it's got the rotary valves, so it has very quick articulation. With the Miraphone, the Bruckner is not a super direct sound compared to the 186 and 188 series. It's a little more velvety in my opinion than that, but not quite like a horn like this. If I was doing a jazz gig, I used to play some in the old days, but if I was playing a jazz gig, this would probably be the horn I would bring, uh, or any kind of onstage gig, I would probably bring this horn as well. For recording, I might still bring the Bruckner. If I was recording on the real hot seat, I might actually bring both. Probably not the York Runner. The York Runner is not great for recording, but it looks like this horn can be a good recording horn. So folks, I'm going to try to record these videos more regularly. So if you like these videos, please click like, please share it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you need help with something tuba related, trumpet related, trombone related, French horn related, music related, let me know. Maybe I'll try to get a quick response video to you or just a comment here on the YouTube page. And let me know things you might want to review in the future when it comes to brass instruments, brass instrument technology, or any of those things. Uh, please leave it in the comment section. I would definitely appreciate it. But I would recommend calling Matt Walters at Dylan Music, and this is no uh, this is no commercial for Dylan music or anything, but he's the guy who has these horns and is distributing them in North America as far as I know. Uh, call him up and uh, talk to him about this instrument. It's definitely worth your time if you're into, in, in the business to get a very professional model tuba for about half the price of what a professional model tuba costs. So give it a try. Eastman's making great products and hopefully uh, you will enjoy it. It was good to see you. I hope to have more video blogs in the future about tubas and trumpets and trombones and life in general. So once again, like my video, subscribe. Hopefully it's not too long and boring. Have a good day.